Welcome back to Getaway, where I've spent the last nine days on an incredible cruise around the coast of Scotland and Ireland. Well, very sadly, this amazing cruise has come to an end. And we've arrived in Dublin on the most stunning day. I've got the rest of the day to explore this beautiful city. Dublin is Ireland's small capital with a huge reputation. Divided by the River Liffey, it's a lively cosmopolitan city that's proudly part of the EU. We began our journey in Edinburgh Castle, so it's only fitting we ended here in Dublin Castle. Now, for 800 years, this was the seat of British power in Ireland. It was actually built by King John I. It was only handed back to the Irish in 1922 with independence. So there are no kings and queens here anymore. Today, it's a wonderful symbol of Irish independence. It's hugely significant to us because this is the one place over 800 years of occupation that we never managed to capture. Throughout the entire period of the English domination here, we never captured this castle. A short walk away from the castle is another proud Irish institution. This is Trinity College, the oldest university in Ireland. It was built in 1592 and its alumni include Samuel Beckett, Bram Stoker, and Oscar Wilde. And the best way to explore it is on a walking tour. Trinity College is modeled after universities like Oxford and Cambridge, and its Georgian architecture is simply beautiful. This walking tour is, has, has really only been established in the last year, and it's really because of the feedback we were getting from visitors to Trinity College. Tourists and visitors were saying to us, we want to know more. We want to know more about this amazing campus, the history of Trinity College. The walking tour gives access to working college buildings, but without doubt, the star of the show is the library. Wow. God, it's the biggest library, I think, I could ever conceive. <laughs> it is pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's a pretty obvious question, but what happened to all the books? Where are all the books? <laughs> so, yes, of course. We're in the middle of a very momentous time here in the old library in, in the history of Trinity College because we're in the middle of an old library redevelopment project. This is a much needed conservation and preservation project which is all about preserving the library, the historic fabric of the, of the building yeah. and its collection for future generations. So what we've done in the last year is we've undertaken a very historic, I suppose, decant process and that's a conservation term just for removing the books from the shelf. When full, the library houses around 200,000 books, including the Book of Kells, an ancient illustrated religious manuscript dating back to around 800 AD. There is one final place I want to visit in Dublin. There's nothing more Irish than a cold pint of Guinness to finish out the day. Housed in a building that has been brewing beer for over 250 years, the Guinness Storehouse tells the story of how Arthur Guinness created an iconic beer that exports Irish culture and flavours to the world. Well, usually when you have a Guinness, you get a little bit on your face. Well, now you can put your face on a Guinness. Are you ready? Yes. It's actually really clever. The printing is malted barley. And if you don't like the photo, you can always have another Guinness. For Guinness aficionados around the world, there has long been a debate about how to pour their ale. Storehouse wants to put the debate to rest once and for all. It all starts by holding the glass at a 45 degree angle. And then you bring this handle forward, gently down, and you've got to watch it fill up till it's just under the harp. And then when it hits the harp, you lower it down and you fill it up just to the top of the harp and that's the finish of that step. A good Guinness needs to rest for about 90 seconds, which allows time for the nitrogen bubbles to settle before topping up with one final pour. Now pushing forward adds the carbon dioxide and then that is the final step. 
Perfect. And with that, my journey comes to an end. Nine days of ultra luxury, adventure, and some of the most stunning landscapes on the planet. There are many ways to explore Scotland and Ireland, but doing it aboard Scenic Eclipse 2 affords you the amazing luxury of going into these remote and spectacular coastlines. It really is the most magical journey.